Mm-hmm. <coughs> Until we have obtained the most qualified forms, not pursue the excellent path, we will fall to make great strides in our journey. So we can, we must strive in all the conditions without exception of such a form. These, thus, these three doors of ours. So, slowly, 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 it will come on and done for us. Since it is especially essential to purify the karmic defilements, we must ensure to cherish a constant application of the four powers. Oh. I, a yogi, have practiced in this manner. You who strive for liberation, you should, you should do likewise. If you do not strive on contemplating the defeats of truth of suffering, the genuine aspiration for liberation does not arise in us. If we do not Contemplate the causal process of origin of suffering. <clears throat> we will fail to understand how to cut the root of cycle resistance. So it is vital to seek through renunciation of this disenchantment with existing truth. Small how to say it. <laughs> Don't recognize which factors us in the cycle of system. I, a yogi, have practiced in this manner. You who aspire for liberation, to should do likewise. So this 17, 18, 19, we finish 17 karma, 18, <laughs> Uh, 20. <clears throat> so, can't. so, this is uh, uh, what we call the medium scope. We finish small scope, right? Small scope is first uh, 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 Guru Yoga practice, right? And then, second is practicing uh, impermanence. And then third, um, we are practicing precious human rebirth. Then after precious human rebirth, then we will move into the understanding of cause and effect. So now, on the basis of this small scope, then we will practice medium scope. Medium scope means <coughs> uh, in order to <coughs> achieve liberation, you go beyond the samsara. So small scope, no liberation, right? You just practice and you will be born in good rebirth, but not liberation from the uh, samsara. So, so once we have good understanding of small scope, then move to the medium scope, understanding. Uh, one individual person liberate from samsara. So that <coughs> uh, that means uh, we have to practice uh, four noble truths and twelve links of independent motivation. So when we know the four noble truths and uh, twelve links of independent origination, we will be able to understand the renunciation from the samsara nature. And then we will be achieve liberation. <coughs> Means we will defeat the excellent emotions, delusions, you know, like three poisons. Uh, so this secondary afflictive emotions. So generally speaking, 
84,000 delusions, then 84,000 delusions come to 6 root delusion and 22nd delusion, then that summary comes to the 3 poison delusion. The 3 poison delusion finally comes to the 1 delusion, fundamental ignorance. Can you understand? So once we <coughs> understand the <coughs> 4 noble truths, then we will be able to understand the nature of samsara. So we will not attest to samsara. Samsara is no nirvana. <laughs> yeah, we do ordinary people, samsara is nirvana. You know? We just temporary happiness. So samsara, <coughs> happiness is always changing. You know? It is nature of now, you know, suffering will change. It will never last long. You know? Lasting happiness is to understand the uh, Four Noble Truths. Told them. So Buddha told <coughs> Four Noble Truths, right? <laughs> Everybody knows Four Noble Truths. He told, he repeat three times. First times, second time, he, he repeat 12 times. First time, Four Noble Truths. Second repeat and third repeat. So when he uh, teach four noble truths after he enlightened Buddha Gaya, in 49 days he remained very silent <coughs> and didn't teach. And then he came to Varanasi Sarma, <coughs> where he, these five disciples, you know, the five disciples. <laughs> they, so, uh, so he taught four noble truths. First, first he introduced four noble truths. In the second repeat, then he said, you must I introduce you four noble truths. Now you have to experience the four noble truths. Just talking about how to practice. And then third repeat. <coughs> so I introduce you <coughs> four noble truths. And I told you to experience, <coughs> follow and meditate. And then finally, you will get the result of the four noble truths. <coughs> so he taught uh, three, three, repeat three times. So number first he repeat this is truth of suffering. This is truth of origin of suffering. This is truth of cessation. This is truth of power, liberation, suffering. So this is. So he's not pointing too far, you know, this is pointing for us. Your your part aggregate. Your part aggregate, you know, the form. Feeling, recognition, karmic formation, and consciousness is your base of imputation of the person. So your five aggregates are truth of suffering. Your five aggregates are truth of suffering. So he <clears throat> first told uh, that old noble truth. So this is truth of suffering, this is truth the origin of suffering, this is cessation, this is path, liberated suffering. So truth the uh, origin, truth of suffering, so he taught, uh, you know, do you know the four seals of the Buddhist? Four seals of the Buddhist? All products are impermanent. All contaminant actions are nature of suffering. All phenomena are empty. Nirvana alone is peace. So this is very much related. Nirvana alone is peace. Just Nirvana alone is peace. So he is talking about uh, first noble uh, truth of suffering <coughs> he, with the four characteristics truth of suffering. Uh, impermanent suffering empty and selflessness. So he's not pointing there. This is suffering. He's pointing for us, you. Your five aggregates, impermanent, suffering, empty, and selflessness. So he's taking an example of our five aggregates. Our five aggregates, right? It's impermanent. It's changing all the time. Never stay. 
right? Our feeling changing, our recognition changing, our karma changing, our mind is changing, you know. So he's not pointing here, he's just pointing to us. How are you guys? <laughs> this is nature of suffering. <clears throat> so it is impermanent, it is momentarily changing. It is nature of suffering. Because you are again a dominant with three kinds of suffering of change, suffering of uh, suffering, suffering of conditioning. It is empty. Your five guess is empty. It's not like somebody like creator, you know. It's every it's created by created by your karma and delusion. Empty. It is selflessness. So you, you are the person like counsel, selflessness. So we talk about the <clears throat> emptiness of selflessness and emptiness of phenomena. Like <clears throat> your aggregate is phenomena. Your aggregate is phenomena, right? And your firm aggregate is based on your designation. Yeah. And then designated person, you are the person mm -hmm. imputed on the five aggregates. So selflessness is your your person is not independently exist. It depends on factors. You you know independent existence because you if you're an independent person, you you don't need a parent. You come from the parent, right? So you not independent existence. Your parent, right? Is man causes <laughs> what man causes your past life, you know, consciousness coming here. But temporary condition is mom and dad. So if you're not selflessness, then you don't need these things. So that's talking about. <clears throat> uh, Truth of this is uh, truth of suffering, impermanent suffering, empty, and selflessness with the four characteristics. If you understand this nature of these four, <clears throat> then you will really understand what is the origin of suffering. <clears throat> what <clears throat> it is not independence; it comes from cause and condition. Mm -hmm. Therefore. This is origin of suffering, he said, Buddha. So this is origin of suffering uh, that Buddha taught with the four characteristics of the origin of suffering. Do, do means cause. Kunjun, Kunjun means origin all the time. Do means love care, means protection. Uh, do means care, means condition. These four characteristics. So this is original suffering, right? Make four characteristics. So this is so you now example like your <clears throat> your your craving and grasping is you cause for you to suffer. You right? Mm -hmm. If you are so you are, if you are not pointing that side but pointing to us, our craving and our grasping is cause. Gu, condition. Then, uh, origin of all the time. So far, if you're dominant by craving and grasping, you know, this suffering all the time, just frequently you suffer. Mentally, physically, just never ever stop. That's origin of suffering, right? And then, uh, protection. Mean, <coughs> protection means it will get more stronger and stronger. You know what I mean? Stronger. You frequent, frequent, familiar, familiar, getting stronger and stronger. Anger is stronger. All delusion, if you are very familiar, mm -hmm. it will get stronger because of craving and grasping. Protection. And then, uh, your craving and grasping is, uh, Condition, <laughs> you know, condition, karma and delusion, you know, karma, right? Mm -hmm. If 
No delusion, no karma. Karma created by delusion, right? Condition. If there's no delusion, you will not create the karma. Because the delusion created bad karma, positive, get, you know what I mean? So virtuous, good karma. Non-virtuous, bad karma, right? So it's condition. So the morning, this is origin of suffering. So this is origin of suffering means condition, uh, origin of all, all the times, production, cause is origin of suffering. So when you understand the, <clears throat> the nature of origin of suffering, then you will go to the, this is cessation. Cessation peace, excellence, and renunciation, you will achieve that. So you understand nature of suffering. Once you understand nature of suffering, then you you understand the, what is the nature of origin of suffering with the four characteristics, right? Four, four, eight characteristics, right? Then you move to the cessation. Now, if you really understand <clears throat> the nature of suffering and nature of cause of suffering, Cessation will happen to you. Cessation, peace, excellence, and uh, renunciation. So cessation is not like temporary cessation. You know? <clears throat> like temporary, we have temporary cessation, right? <clears throat> For example, like when anger arrives, not will really stay all the times, not 24 hours. <clears throat> Other delusion, not 24 hours. Attachment, not 24 hours. Jealousy is not 24 hours. 24 hours is ignored. It's 24 hours. You understand? So cessation is not talking about temporary cessation. We have temporary cessation. When anger, we can apply compassion, patience. Right? When jealousy arrives, we can apply rejoicing, other quality. It temporarily, we will stop, but here, <coughs> not talking about temporary ultimate cessation ultimate cessation completely subside the delusion three poison so if you completely subside the delusions this is cessation is peace <clears throat> it is completely subside your three poison this is ultimate peace it is excellent qualities what is more than that one it's not a temporary qualities. It is ultimate quality. It is always there. You don't have to change these qualities. Understand what I'm saying? And it is renounce, renunciation. I mean, it will never decrease. Never ever decrease. So this is what Buddha told about cessation, peace, uh, Gumba Shiva, <clears throat> Chanu means excellence, uh, Ngejung means renunciation. So you have this right, uh, third noble truth, <clears throat> uh, which is called the truth of <clears throat> cessation, right? Cessation. Now cessation, then you, cessation comes from the to the path, right? What? To the path. What is to the path? Understanding two types of emptiness. Wisdom realizes emptiness of the person. Wisdom realizes emptiness of phenomena. It's a path which leads you to the cessation, peace, excellence, and Gopa Shiva Chanungin. Gopa Shiva and renunciation. So, path, and so now path will. Move to the path, right? Path. Path is wisdom which develops emptiness. Good person. You are you, a person, right? You are empty. Your aggregates are phenomena. Your, the person is empty, is emptiness of person. Your aggregate empty is emptiness of phenomena. <clears throat> so he told about this is path. What does path mean? Uh, <clears throat> Four characteristics. Path, awareness, lambdupa. 
requirement achievement and definitely freedom so what is the path is wisdom which life emptiness is opponent to the grasping mind delusion mind uh, path and it is awareness <clears throat> awareness it 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 wisdom which relies emptiness to the person direct oppose the grasping direct like like <clears throat> like uh, example like uh, <clears throat> light and darkness cannot go together light and dark cannot go together right it oppose each other so when we have wisdom realizing emptiness oppose direct oppose the the grasping mind grasping so it is awareness lam dupa rigba achievement what will you achieve <laughs> achievement right right achieve <clears throat> so achievement is <clears throat> once we have this uh, uh what we call the lam dupa lam dupa rigba is a uh, rigba is the so ones you have wisdom realize emptiness wisdom realize with direct oppose the grasping man you will achieve the, see the all the phenomena all the natural phenomena that is achievement you see the natural phenomena all all you know you see all the natural phenomena directly that is achievement <clears throat> and then um uh, next one from dupa dupa gaining definitely freedom <clears throat> definitely if you have this instrument wisdom will realize emptiness awareness achievement you will definitely free from the from half so this is buddha told <clears throat> four noble truth repeat three times this is origin of suffering this is true the suffering this is true the origin of suffering this is <clears throat> true the cessation this is true the path second uh, he said recognize true the suffering recognize origin of suffering recognize cessation and recognize path third repeat if you recognize nature of suffering you don't recognize again If you recognize origin of suffering no need again if you have cessation no need another cessation if you have this part no need another part so he repeat three times <coughs> of the buddha told this four noble truth repeating three times first time when he repeat this is five disciples remember in varanasi five disciples uh the kushika udana it in a disciple you know when the buddha say this is suffering this is truth of suffering this is cessation this is the you know path then among the five sinner he achieved the path of path of during that period he achieved the <coughs> uh, path of seeing tarik understand and then and remaining four you don't understand remaining four understand internet with the inferential valid mind they are not directly seeing the nature of these four noble truths then second time when he repeat right then this uh, senior kushika udana is the better i don't know english kushika udana sanskrit the five disciples <clears throat> so he uh, he became arya nirvana and four disciple they are part of seeing and when he repeat third times then this four disciple became arya so became first five, five arya in india including buddha six arya this is the first time when buddha in latin <coughs> so so this is how buddha told the repeated these uh, repeat three times 
the he said that uh, he just said that ordinary people are like hand pump. We we are hand pump, right? Mm. And we have if we have hand pump, and if we have tiny, you know, how can I say, tiny hair in the hand pump, we do do not recognize, uh, right? Yeah. In the ordinary people are like this, hand pump, but tiny. You know, uh, tiny. What do you call the hair? You you don't recognize this if it's in your hand, right? But uh, Arya, if you this who see the nature, <coughs> is, do you remember these four noble truths? Noble means Arya, Arya beings. So Arya beings are like like eye. If hair goes in the eye, you know, you just recognize like this. <coughs> Chipa means us. We ordinarily like hand pump. Yeah. Here in the hand, we do not recognize. But Arya like I, Pakma Migdan Dawai, if the hair goes in the eye, just recognize. You know what I mean? So this is the four number two. And he gave the example of the <clears throat> uh, um, what he uh, Metya, uh, Metya Buddha, example of the ordinary sickness is truth of suffering. Right? Yeah. Then you have sickness, then you have to find the what cause is the sickness. If you are sick, you know, you have to find, see the doctor. You know? Then doctor says this is the cause of suffering, yeah. origin of suffering. But you find the cause of suffering, then you wish, uh, I have to, I wish, I will overcome from this sickness. It's like cessation. And then you will take the medicine. It's like pump. Ordinary level sickness. Then you find the cause of your sickness, and then you wish I will overcome from this sickness. Then you take medication. Then like to the suffering, to the <clears throat> uh, origin of suffering, to the cessation, to the path. You take example of your sickness, similar like this. So it means <clears throat> so four noble truth. We have to understand the nature of the four noble truth. We are we are understanding what the nature, real nature, you know what I mean. And then, uh, then this will help you to, to develop renunciation from the samsara, you know. And then, two links of interdependent origination, right, the will of life. <clears throat> so now will of life started, first it started with ignorance, second, karmic formation, third, uh, consciousness, right? Motivated by ignorance. You know, ignorance means not understanding that your emptiness, see? not understanding emptiness of yourself and phenomena. That's ignorance. So that ignorance, motivated by ignorance, <clears throat> and that will Kill the karmic formation, the second one. Then karmic formation, karma will carry into consciousness, right? Consciousness. So we will let good karma, bad karma, all is stored in the mind. Just like imprint is stored in the mind. You know? So this is, we will not see the imprint. Imprint are very subtle. You know? Any any time you just say something, imprint store in the mind. The mind carries the imprint, good or bad, whatever, you know, we do. Imprint always goes in the mind. So that plant the seed. Seed, store in the mind, right? If you have good karma, good store. Bad karma, bad store. So then this will <coughs> lead you to the rebirth. So good rebirth, throw in good throw karma, throw into the good rebirth. Bad, Bad rebirth. So that 
name and form, human being, name and form. Number four. Then after name and form, then uh, six senses. Number five. I hear no time, you know, growing, you know, mother womb, nine, nine months. We are growing in the mother womb, nine months, right? So, <laughs> nine months, you know, pregnant, right? And then this will, uh, then name in the form, after this, contact. Right? And after contact, if there's contact, there's feeling. Then feeling, then craving. Then craving, then grasping. Then grasping, then fully wrap and come away. Becoming and then birth, then aging and death. So this is pregnancy, interdependent organization in samsara, you know. So you see in the <clears throat> picture, you know, three animals. <laughs> snake and rooster. Oh, rooster yeah. and snake. snake. So this symbol of the three poisons. You see half is white. Half is black, black karma go down, white karma up. Right? So you see the pure examples, many many things like this. And then we see the Buddha, you know, pointing down moon liberation. If you cross this, this will go to liberation. You know, pointing like this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not pointing, the pointing will ask go to liberation. <laughs> it is like. Uh, um, uh, this is the samsara nature. You know. so once we understand this right, four noble truths and two links of interdependent origination, then we are practicing medium scope, renouncing from the samsara. Right? You know. So these are uh, the medium scope. So these five disciples <laughs> in the Buddha, when Buddha enlightened right, in, under the Bodhi tree, right, they are the attendant of the Buddha. Buddha under the <clears throat> under the Bodhi tree, six years meditation. And after he thought, oh, if I remain like this, I cannot help sentient beings. Therefore, I have to come back from this, then, uh, you know, then would, uh, you know, to help sentient beings. So he eat gross food for the women from that area. We go to the guy, she, they have 100 cows, a very wealthy woman. She offer the, the, you know, milk first time after six years meditation. And then these five disabled, they said, oh, he is not good, he is not good meditator. If they are run away to foreigners, <laughs> no, we are not staying with you. I thought you are in London, now you are eating gross food, then they run to the foreigners. <clears throat> and they went to the foreigners. And then after 49 days, Buddha went to the foreigners. And this, they saw Buddha coming, you know, we don't listen to this, no, he is not good. <laughs> As soon as, as soon as Buddha walking through this, they have no choice, you know. Everybody wake up <laughs> no, because of the it's strongly karmic connected with these five disciples are karmic connection with the Buddha. In the, this in the Nepal, you know, tiger, you know, you know five tiger, you know. Uh, you go to Nepal, look, what is called the place? Tangmulu, <laughs> with the Buddha, uh, one ma mother tiger with five cubs. So these five cubs are formed of these five disciples. And the king who gave this, uh, his body to the five cubs, they all connected, make connection with karma, long time. These five disciples. Mm -hmm. eventually, eventually uh, Buddha pray. When I enlighten, I will be teach Dharma uh, to this five. You have the karmic connection, otherwise you cannot help. <clears throat> if there's no karmic connection, right? Mm. Even bad karmic connection can help, you know what I mean? If there's no karmic connection, you cannot help. So anyway, these are Buddha coming, right? 
but you do know where we start. Yeah. But learning is like virtue. So do this first, Guru Yoga. You finish, move to impermanence. You finish, fortunate rebirth. You finish, meditate on karma. Then you move to the medium school. Four noble truths, two lives of independent organization. So medium school, then you move to the uh, great school. Bodhicitta <clears throat> right? With the six perfection. And then you move to Tantra. Action Tantra, Pramun Tantra, uh, uh, Yoga Tantra, Highest Yoga Tantra. Then you move to the here, here, here. Samsara. You have Samsara in the form. <laughs> then you move to right, but, but you move to Bodhicitta Mahayana. Truly, nature Buddhist in the mind, coming home, and then Shanti Deva, then practice, then move six perfection, then emptiness, then after this, you have perfect good foundation for the Tantra, then you action, performance, <clears throat> yoga, Tantra, and keep going like that. Okay, that's Rina tonight. Everyone, you know. Okay, thank you very much.